Hi, this is Elaine again. This is my third video um, talking about the Adult Children of Alcoholics program. Here's that book again. I've held it up like every time. And um, again, it's about not just children of alcoholics, but children of dysfunctional uh, parents. So we're working on that. Now the last video was about the laundry list. The laundry list is a little bit depressing, but it is about, okay, 14 characteristics of an adult child. That was the last one. And it talks about all the um, symptoms, I might even call it, that describe somebody who grew up in a dysfunctional home. So that home um, might have met our physical needs, maybe not even that, maybe it didn't even meet our physical needs, but it didn't meet our emotional needs. And as children, it wasn't our fault because we were in, you know, kind of stuck in a place that we didn't get to make decisions for ourselves. Then as adults, we we learn to cope as children in, on some level, maybe not the best, but some level to survive. But as adults, we continue these coping mechanisms that were not the best kind. And of course, the, one of the worst case scenarios is to, be, to continue the pattern to become an alcoholic or addicted to something um, or dysfunctional in some way or to become like a victim all the time. So these are manifestations of of that feeling when we were children of being out of control and not being able to meet, uh, have our needs met. And so we might function, uh, some of us maybe not at all, but some of us might function in, in some respects, it might seem like it, uh, but we emotionally are not functioning. And we might even be able to pretend that we're functioning emotionally, but we're really, you know, kind of deficient in that. So, um, that was a long video and I, it, cause it took some time to break down those 14 characteristics and explain them. But I think it's really important. Like if you have a chance to watch the previous one about the laundry list and then the, it's sort of like in this video, you take all those bad, bad things, I guess we call them bad things. These, these, um, aspects of ourselves that manifest in these 14 characteristics and you just kind of flip it like what does it look like how do we turn that those 14 characteristics um symptoms of dysfunction into something positive and there's definitely you have to do the steps i think i think it helps to do the steps um but the solution is the um what i want to talk about today the solution, here we go, is the inverse of everything that was in the previous video, the, the laundry list. Um, reading it and understanding it is not going to solve things, but it, it basically tells you what this program is going to look like if you do it, like from the beginning all the way to the end. Now, a lot of what it says here talks about going to meetings. And again, it's 2020, September, oct almost October, and it doesn't seem like meetings are going to be happening. I don't know. Maybe there's distanced meetings. I haven't looked it up. It could, could be that there are meetings in your area. So look at, you know, look up adult children of alcoholics and meetings, and perhaps some are actually taking place. But, um, Think of just your online community possibly as your meeting, or at least try to understand that there's love out there <laughs> and people who wish well to you, especially others like myself who've been through this program and understand. And I might add that this time, this lockdown time, is also kind of, uh, there's a lot of fear and it's going to trigger a lot of the same dysfunctional behaviors and it exacerbates it in many ways. Now, fear is your enemy. This is not a good thing, fear. So fear motivates, if it motivates us to do something, then 
that's okay, but temporarily. So if it motivates us, like, this can't get any worse, and I'm really down, I'm really depressed, I need something. And it's triggering this sad stuff from the past as well. Um, that fear should motivate you to get out of the fear and to get into some sort of um, action. So I'm going to skip over the, I mean, I'm not going to skip over. I'm going to read the parts about attending the meetings, but please think in terms of, I guess it's wonderful if you can find other people, since a lot of us have a lot more time on our hands, find other people that want to work the steps too, that maybe acknowledge that, hey, you know, this is a good time to address these things from childhood. And I think it's kind of like really empowering in a time where a lot of people feel helpless. I think it's very empowering to take up this program and assert ourselves for, for hope. So, okay, the solution. This is how it reads. And again, I wish I could have the time and like video, you know, graphics for you to show the inverse <laughs> laundry list to solution, but you got this, so that's what it is. Um, the solution is to become your own loving parent. As ACA becomes a safe place for you, you will find freedom to express all the hurts and fears that you have kept inside and to free yourself from the shame and blame that are carryovers from the past. You will become an adult who is imprisoned no longer by childhood reactions. You will recover the child within you, learning to love and accept yourself. So first meeting I ever went to, and we read the, you know, the serenity prayer. We read the, the problem or the 14 characteristics, which basically is the same as the problem. And then we read the solution. And this is where the floodgates opened and the tears spilled out. My own loving parent. That just seemed almost unbelievable. I mean, there's a part of me that wishes I could go back and, you know, have loving parents or have loving parents that could consistently love me. Uh, not that they, they didn't. I, I don't take from what they tried to do. Um, but the kind of loving parent that helps you to feel safe. So when I read this, it's like, wow, to become my own loving parent seemed almost unbelievable. But there were people sitting in the room that had done as much. They had been through the program. Some, some of the elder members of the, the group could attest to having done this. So I thought, let's give it a chance. And wow, anyway, um, it becomes a safe place for you. Again, if you can choose a meeting, you want it to be safe, and it feels like people will be keep things in confidence. Uh, if you're working the program alone, it, it's you know it's kind of safe, right? <laughs> so, um, and we want to be free of blame and shame. Now, this is I always thought that I didn't spend a lot of time blaming my parents. But I certainly felt a lot of shame because I didn't feel like I fit in. I didn't feel like I was functioning. I felt like just such a, like a weirdo, you know. And um, I guess I did blame, you know. I mean, it's just that I didn't express it. I didn't go around like, oh, if it wasn't for my parents, blah, blah, blah. But I, I know I felt it, you know. I know that when, in, in my very private moments, I would think that to myself, like, God, I could have had a different life if my parents hadn't been dysfunctional, right? So, but you want to be free of that. It's not working for you. It doesn't work. The, the victimization and the blaming, you want to express it, but then be free of it. And this might be a process that takes time and you may have to come back to it. Um, you become an adult, imprisoned no longer by childhood reactions and the idea is that in the previous video that I talked about, the characteristics is you are an adult, but you're doing things that children do. You, you don't think so because as an adult, we interpret everything as adults, but it's not the right kind of response to life and, and emotional feelings. So we want to be an adult you know? and we want to and that means a happy functional adult are we immature i guess you know <laughs> that would be the best um thing that i could say uh, the healing begins when we risk moving out of isolation 
Isolation is one of those characteristics, the 13, the 14 characteristics, sorry. Feelings and buried memories will return. So all that comes out, it's like purging, right? By gradually releasing the burden of unexpressed grief. So the grief, maybe, maybe we've never expressed it, like to the degree we're going to do in this program. It, it does feel a little good to get it off our chest. Um, we slowly move out of the past. We learn to reparent ourselves with gentleness, humor, love, and respect. So that would be the, the best thing for our parents to have given us. And to some extent, they may have tried. But gentleness, humor, love, and respect. Wow. Like, what if we got a little of that every day from our caregivers and even the pe people in our lives now? The process allows us to see our biological parents as the instruments of our existence. It sounds a little cold, like you just like made me, that's it. We, but we do acknowledge their love. It's okay to love those people. But it's asking you to do a radical thing. It says our actual parent is a higher power whom some of us choose to call God. So we, I went over this whole thing about God and those people who are in the audience who are not comfortable with that. Just remember, substitute higher power, and that's our best self or the universe or however you want to refigure that. Um, although we had alcoholic or dysfunctional parents, our higher power gave us the 12 steps of recovery. I think of it this way. Somebody came up with this program and wrote it all down and put it into a great big book and they were led by their higher power. So in that respect, it was, it came from the higher power, okay? Or that person's higher uh, vibration of self, the most positive and functional and happy self. So substituting our parents, it sounds um, like a betrayal. It shouldn't though. You know, our parents loved us. So, well, most of our parents loved us to the degree that they were able to do because they may have been dysfunctional because of their parents. So these things, you know, they, they, people generationally just keep passing down dysfunction and they don't know any better because especially, let's say, you know, starting like even a hundred years ago, the idea that you might repair it yourself just kind of seemed like a silly thing. You're just supposed to man up or or don't don't feel sorry for yourself or whatever it is or just bury those things or don't talk about family all those messages told you not to move out of that function dysfunctional behavior okay so this is the action and work that heals us as we use the steps we use the meetings we use the telephone so if you can connect to people, that's great. Maybe we use the YouTube, you know, what what works? Who are people that had experiences like you? I'm sure you'll find that if you, if you look for it. Just try to imagine that that person put that video out because they care about you like I am. I don't, I've never met some of you, but if I don't even know if you'll ever watch this video, I'm sure I'm not like up there in the um, al algorithms, but the point is, is that if you come across me or you come across another video, think of that as sort of your family in this and people you can talk to. Um, we share our experience, strength, and hope with each other. We learn to restructure our sick thinking one day at a time. When we release our parents from responsibility for our actions today, we become free to make Healthful decisions as actors, not reactors. Again, actors, not reactors. That was mentioned in a previous video as one of the um, characteristics. We keep reacting to things. We keep having to put out little fires here. We keep getting angry or sad or or frustrated or feel blamey and shamey and victimy and everything. Um, and then we run over here to some other some other problem, but. This program promises that we will be actors. Mostly what that is, is just making good decisions today that we're not going to regret later. And that's different than decisions we made in the past that were based on our dysfunction. So it's living in the moment and making good decisions. And that has a lot to do with taking the responsibility on ourselves. And even if we think, no, that's not right. 
those people need to pay. Those people did me wrong. They're probably not going to do it, right? And you want to stay stuck? No, you don't want to stay stuck. You want a good life. Some people say living well is the best revenge. Okay, if you have to think of it that way, that's, that's fine too. Whatever it takes to get you to the point that you see yourself as taking the responsibility. There's no other way. If you're dysfunctional and you're unhappy and nobody's coming to rescue you, then you have to decide to be the you <laughs> that's going to rescue you, your own loving parent. Okay. Um, we progress from hurting. So here's the progression from hurting to healing to helping. So what we felt, we get it out. We start to heal and we're good to, for others. I mean, think of that. Think of our journey leads us to help others with the same things like I'm doing today to some extent. And I still have to go back and deal with the old stuff. But I can say, having been through the program, I understand it enough and I could stand here as testimony or sit here as testimony that that you also can experience like joy and happiness and you also notice that I don't I'm not pro promoting any product I'm not going to make any money out of this I just do this because it's worked for me and I feel bad that others aren't aware that they could be happy that they follow the steps okay by attending these meetings on a regular basis you will come to see parental alcoholism or family dysfunction for what it is a disease that infected you as a child and continues to affect you as an adult. You will learn to keep the focus on yourself in the here and now. You will take responsibility for your own life and supply your own parenting. So you'll get it. Like in time, the here and now is like this really great place where something comes up. Like something that, like a laundry list, po possible laundry list reaction <laughs> to it. And something will come up like judging ourselves harshly. I'll give you that one. That's a good one. Um, like we get mad at ourselves. We judge ourselves on this little voice inside that might have been kind of the same as what our parents or guardians told us. We do it to ourselves. We say it to ourselves. This program, what will happen is something, you'll, you'll mess up, right? You're going to mess up with something and you're going to like, just, oh, I'm so stupid. And then you stop and you say, no, 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 no. Okay. That was a dysfunctional behavior, judging myself harshly. I want to be my own loving parent and be gentle and say, no, that's okay. People make mistakes. We learn from mistakes. We get past mistakes. Mistakes are like only in the present. And if we think differently about them, we're going to move on to healing again. It's going to be okay. That's what we need to tell ourselves. And that's part of being like in the here and now. It's so powerful. And you feel it like the program becomes part of you. It's like it infuses you and it becomes part of your thinking. It's like memorizing a poem or memorizing um, something. And then it comes up when it's needed, you know, so it's great. Um, and you take responsibility for your own life and supply your own parenting. So really, that's the parenting. There's a voice over here. This old parenting says, you're worthless, you're stupid, look at you, you messed up. And here and now, we recognize that when something happens, and we say, oh, wait, that's judging myself harshly. And we become our own loving parent. Okay? Um, and turn it around. You will not do this alone. Well, you may have to, but maybe you won't have to. I Hopefully you find uh, brothers and sisters who want to be, you know, like your brothers and sisters in the higher power. Um, look around you and you will see others who know how you feel. We will love and encourage you no matter what. We ask you to accept us just as we accept you. This is the spiritual program based on action coming from love. We are sure that as the love grows inside you, you will see beautiful changes in all your relationships, especially with God, yourself, and your parents. And again, that's that. Um, one of the steps is actually coming to terms with, with God. Okay, God is, um, for some people, God is, is this real being that listens and loves us, and that really helps 
quite a bit in a program like this, but sometimes we think of God as this mean and punishing person who is always doing the gotcha. You know, we see God as, um, the, you know, those Ten Commandments and, and hell and and damnation. And we, we kind of make our parents like that sort of God, and we make God something like our parents. Um, and so, again, whether you believe in God or not, it's a, there's a voice, and that you can't deny. There is a voice that tells us things, and we believe in that voice. Our beliefs are what we hear inside our heads and how we respond. Um, so we're going to be in our steps dealing with that, those voices that tell us negative things. And I'm not talking about this like weird um, paranormal stuff or anything, but just, you know, the programming that's in our heads that tells us uh, that we're dysfunctional and not good enough or something. So um, we will grow love inside ourselves. Think about the dynamic I just said. You did something, you screwed up, and the voice tells you, you're so stupid, you never do anything right. Look at you, look at the mess you made, look at the things you spilled on the floor, look at, you know, look at the bad grade you got there, you know, on that paper. Um, whatever, like, mm, you know, that voice that you hear. In the here and now, you stop that. You don't, you know, on some level, you feel responsible for those bad things. You, sh you do take responsibility. It's okay. But you also are a loving parent that says, it's okay. You'll get through this. Hopefully you learned your lesson or be, be kind to yourself. Forgive yourself. Um, other people have done this. You could pick up the pieces, whatever the loving admonition that you, you should have gotten or you wish to get. You tell yourself that. That's the transformation in this. That is part of what you're doing in this program. And that's what makes you ready for those. Those 12 steps actually will help you to develop that. So, um, and also it gives you beautiful changes in all your relationships. People will notice. Like for me, people notice. They said, you seem different. And it's like, thank you. <laughs> you can see that I feel different because yes, I went through this program and I take responsibility for my own actions. So I was in, not to give you too much, but I was in a relationship. Just This is what brings most people to these meetings is some kind of relationship that went awry, you know, and it's just like, sometimes it's devastating, right? And that relationship brought me to these meetings it, and that that relationship revealed for me and I won't I wouldn't even thank that person I'm gonna say but in a sense um, it was the catalyst I'm not I don't like to thank people for making my life difficult but the thing is is that that's what I attracted that's what I thought I deserved and now it's like I, I deserve myself you know, I deserve myself, my best self, my most loving self. And other people will notice that in you. They'll see that you're happier, that you're standing up straighter, that you're smiling. It's not some kind of shortcut or fast track thing to happiness. And you won't always be happy because that's not realistic. But you will have tools. And those tools are going to take you a long way towards changing Again, people will notice, and it benefits other people, too. They they feel good about that, and they might even say, you know, I might need something like that, too. Or they might not say that. <laughs> That's okay, because this program is just for you. Okay, so I look forward to making another video, um, and I believe... I would like to talk about the promises, but promises... Um, no, they're, they're very good. I guess I'll get, I'll do promises next. <laughs> I'm deciding live on camera what I'm going to do. Um, but a lot of the solution is similar to the promises. Promises are like, what does it look like? Can you envision this future? 
what if if things if you went through the program what would you like to see and sometimes we don't even know what it looks like because we're so used to being in the doldrums and in the misery and stuck in the mud um, the promises are kind of nice because somebody describes for you what it is to be functional and what it is to to love yourself and that is kind of amazing so that's for next time yeah I guess I will do that one it should be short so um, anyway I hope it's been helpful to you I've got a review if you want to look at my previous videos I did one on the serenity prayer um, which in it of itself just that right there is powerful so that's a good place to start. And if you're not ready for the program, like read that every day. Put it on the refrigerator or something. Next one was the 14 characteristics, which is, I think most people know they're dysfunctional, but it's like, it describes everything. It tells like, you probably are doing this, you're doing this. And at least you say, mm, I relate to that. Yeah, maybe I need this program. Then today we talked about the solution. And it really kind of is in a nutshell, what's gonna happen? Like, how does it look from start to finish? Um, and that finish is a funny word because it's not necessarily you're ever going to finish this work. That's okay. It means just it's maintenance, it's practice. And then next, the promises. What does it look like? Then we'll start on the steps. And um, if, if you follow along with me, then, you know, I... It, I'm going to think that if you get to the steps and if you've actually looked at the other ones, you probably want to go out and get yourself a notebook or something because maybe by that video you really do feel committed and you really think you want to take notes and write this down and it's going to require, if you really want to change, anything worth changing for takes a little bit of effort. So you really don't get anything like they say for free and I don't mean by money but I mean you want effort in gives back rewards so it's the effort to gain the rewards and the rewards are not monetary they're entirely um, emotional and spiritual and they you'll feel really good when you're done anyway thank you and i hope you enjoyed the video and i wish for you to be able to make the best decisions for your own life and and to be as happy as you can in the future thank you